Hi, my name is Jeannie. I'm going to be training on uh, Metallica. Uh, we're going to do some checks real close to make sure that the system is available and uh, uh, in a manual mode. Uh, you're going to check to make sure that the high voltage toggle is up. You're going to make sure that the roughing pump cryo toggles are down. The red light is off. You're going to make sure that your gate valve is closed clockwise. Uh, you're going to make sure your roughing valve is closed clockwise. And these two valves, roughing and gate uh, valve, may never be open at the same time or you're going to backfill oil into the chamber. Uh, you're going to make sure your N2 valve is closed. You have your empty sign. You're going to check to make sure you have the correct material. So in this roll around cart, you're going to remove your log book and a box uh, with your one inch in diameter, uh, one eighth of an inch thick uh, targets. Once you have the material uh, that you're going to use and the system checks out, you're going to enable on coral and then we can vent the system. And by venting the system, we're gonna open the N2 valve. This takes about five minutes. We're going to wait for decompression in the O-ring. Right here is your O-ring. Uh, once um, the hoist ready light is lit, we actually wait one additional minute. And that is because it is not completely vented at this point. If you um, force it up, you're gonna break your wafers. So you wait one additional minute and once that's up and you see a decompression, you're going to push the rocker and lift the hoist, the bell jar up. This bell jar would stop, will stop on its own. It doesn't matter. You can stop it yourself. You don't need to go as high as it goes unless you're super tall, but you're going to do inspections inside and you're going to remove all the parts. Uh, onto the table over here with uh, clean wipes so that we keep our, our parts as clean as possible. Um, to be able to remove your part, you're going to make sure you have your vinyl gloves on. Okay, you have four, four uh, inch or 100 millimeter slots. One carries a dummy wafer. Uh, we're going to set it on the table where we have clean wipes. You have two chimneys. You're going to inspect to make sure that there is no uh, peeling bubbles. You're going to also set those on the clean wipe. On this machine you can only sputter two metal, two layers. You have your cathode, you have your anode. You have to hold the anode from the center because it's two pieces. If you try to hold it at the edge, it will fall on the floor. Once we removed all the parts and set them on the clean wipe, we're going to do an inspection to make sure that the previous users have cleaned off the um, magnetic table and to make sure there's no broken wafers, to make sure that we no one has uh, sputtered any metal on, in the bell jar. In the box, we're going to be using titanium and uh, gold. So this is a brand, uh, this is a used titanium. This is a brand new titanium. It's flat on both sides. Once we bring in a new target, we scribe the back when it's uh, silver in color. So the scribe on this one says TI right here. And so I am going to use this as my front. So these are one uh, inch in diameter, one eighth of an inch thick. You cannot let it go below uh, the thickness in the deepest area, um, any deeper than 0 0.02 inches using a drop down gauge. So with a uh, swab stick and some silver paste that's conductive, that's going to help keep our target cool. 
It's very thick, but you don't need very much. You're going to get the target, and on the back of the target, you're going to apply this silver paste. And you want to keep it as smooth as possible. No lumps, no bumps, or you can cause yourself a short. After the, uh, applying the paste, you want to make sure you change your vinyl gloves because it's pretty messy and you don't want to get it all over anything. You're going to try to center your target right in uh, the middle of your magnetic table. Once you drop it, you're going to apply a little bit of pressure and you're going to move this target slightly just to make sure you have a flat amount of silver paste. Because if it's too thick on one side, you're going to cause a short. So once you've done that, we're going to attach the cathode. So you're going to place the screws into the holes. And once it sets freely, we're going to screw down your screws. But what you're going to have to do is um, move your toggle to A on your status drawer, and then you're going to tighten, alternate. Never take one screw all the way down. Alternate to the next screw. Alternating alternating and when you get to the bottom you're just going to uh, have your screw snug not tight once you you're done you're going to check your status box to make sure that the LED is green your anode has two pieces so you always want to hold it from the center or the centerpiece will fall. You have four holes and you want to make sure that they aligned uh, on both pieces. And then you're going to drop the uh, anode onto three pins. So any of the four holes that are on the anode, uh, doesn't matter which hole, you drop them into the three pins. If one pin was to break, you can still run this machine with two pins. So now we have the anode and we're going to check the status box to make sure the LED is green and okay to continue. The last uh, piece uh, on this source gun is uh, your chimney. And on the chimney you have a mark and we mark it each time when they come back uh, from cleaning. Uh, we're going to align it with this screw. If um, once it's aligned uh, uh, and the LED is green, we can continue and set up um, your target A. The second chimney does not need to be lined up. It can go um, any place because we don't have a viewport above it. Uh, these, the reason why we put a line is because they're interchangeable. All parts here are interchangeable, whether it's a cathode, anode, chimney. You can load your platen with your wafers or glass wafers, silicon wafers, and you lower it, lower it onto two pins. Um, on the platen you have number one, two, three, four, and your dummy wafer usually is in number one position. So you're going to put that in front of the under layer, the adhesive layer, and you're going to align the uh, front alignment marks that are on the, plat on the chimney to the screw in front. If you're processing pieces, you need to tape uh, the pieces to a silicon wafer uh, using uh, tapes that are uh, vacuum compatible. Um, and you have to make sure that they can uh, pass the chimney uh, with no problem. You're going to use this black knob when we're rotating and it'll be very difficult to see because uh, the bell jar will be down.
Once everything is aligned, you can lower the bell jar with the hoist rocker. This is the only button you'll be touching on this panel, is the hoist button, up and down. Release, you want to hold it a few seconds um, later because the shaft has to come all the way down. Now you're going to switch the uh, roughing pump, toggle up. You have a pump light that comes on that's red. You're going to walk over here to the roughing valve and you're going to open. We use a dry pump today and it'll be very noisy when you first turn it on. It takes uh, a minute or so and it, the noise will taper off. It takes uh, approximately five minutes to reach 150 millitor that you'll be monitoring on the vacuum gauge. At this time, I'm going to put my paste away. Uh, the swap stick can go in the trash. The paste goes back in the box. The box will go back into your roll around cart and I can fill out my logbook. Once you've turned off the pump, you do not have to wait for the red light. You can continue and um, open your gate valve. And you're going to open this valve all the way until you cannot open it any further. Please do not force it. Now we're going to press the on button on the ion gauge. This on button is also your off button when we end up turning it off. You're going to IG1 for ion gauge 1. You get your digital readoff. You're going to wait until it reaches 1 times 10 to the minus 6. And this takes approximately 1 hour. Once we've reached the desired pressure or lower, we record it in the logbook because you're going to uh, lose this once we start touching buttons. We're going to close this gate valve all the way. When we close it all the way, we're going to open it just one, approximately one full turn. I have a pin on uh, two sides, one up here, one down here. I'm going to bring the top pin all the way back to where um, it's marked E in valve. This is going to get you closer to your 5 times 10 to the minus 3. So you um, open it only up to the E, approximately one full turn. And we're going to switch the Argon mass flow controller to position 2. We're going to uh, high voltage enable toggle down. Um, I'm going to make sure that my target uh, toggle is on target A. That's my titanium, my adhesive layer. I'm going to come around here for my argon and I'm going to counterclockwise turn it one quarter turn. This is your T inlet valve. It is uh, pointing to the closed position Counterclockwise, you want it pointing to the argon line.
And now we're going to wait for base pressure to stabilize. Once your uh, pressure and your uh, argon flow meet, reach their set point, I'm going to check inside to make sure that I can see the alignment marks and the wafer is still uh, there for sputtering, but it also verifies that I have a dummy wafer that I'm going to remove any contaminants from touching or if I got some silver paste on there, we're going to get it off before I commit to a real wafer. So this is a one minute uh, sputter to clean up the target only. We're going to uh, press on for the power supply. We're going to uh, press set point because we have to tell it what power. Anywhere from 50 to 100 watts do not go over 100 watts. We're going to run titanium at 75 watts. We unlock the level, adjust up. This um, set point is at 79. There's a correction factor of 4. When the uh, actual sputtering starts, it will say 75 watts. Okay, so there is a correction factor of 4 on all uh, power that you're using. If it's 100, you're going to set it at 104. Alrighty, we're ready. We're going to set the timer. And um, I have a dummy wafer on target A to clean up the target. Uh, make sure that I don't have any silver paste or any contaminants when I touched it with my hands. Once I press start, you're going to be watching to make sure that there's no arcing. Power goes up smooth. You're going to look inside and make sure you have a plasma and that plasma is not arcing, flashing at you. At this point, you're not going to make any notations. You're just going to clean up a target. I have a plasma. Once it's done, then I'll move the um, planet platinum over to target B and do the same thing. Clean up the target for uh, our real wafers to sputter on. And that's an this is uh, platinum, so it won't it will uh, be a shorter time because platinum has a faster depth rate. Okay, to rotate the platen, uh, you can have a buddy system, one that watches and signals when you've reached the um, set point. Or you can try to do it yourself. And you'll have to reach back here with your arm, turn this black knob until the... Uh, back up, too much. Are we there? And then we're ready with the dummy wafer in position um, B3. It isn't B3, it's target. After cleaning up the target uh, A, we're going to switch over to target B. And that means I have platinum there. I'm going to change my set point, my power to 104 watts. My output will still be 100 watts. I have to make sure that my target B is selected so that this B gun will start up. I'm going to make sure there's a plasma. I'm going to set my clock for one minute. So it's very important to know where that dummy wafer is sitting on the platen. So we're getting ready to start. Start timer. You're making sure everything is nice and stable once it reaches its set point. I look inside, make sure I have a plasma, and we just wait until we're completed. Now that we have cleaned up both targets, we know we can strike a plasma. This is very important because if you don't do this, you may receive one layer and not be able to strike a plasma with a second target. So now that I'm done, I'm going to switch my toggle F1 for my titanium. My next wafer is in position target A. 
this is very important. I now have to reduce my power for titanium. It runs at 75 watts. Then I can go back to my set point. I'm going to set my clock. Titanium, we want 100 angstroms. We set the clock for 2 minutes and 30 seconds. This has a depth rate of 40 angstroms per minute. Make sure my toggle's on A. Make sure I have 75 watts. Uh, clock is set. Press on. Start clock. You're going to write the different parameters. 75 watts. This is a three-way toggle. You're going to record 75 watts, 368 volts and 0.212 amp current in your, in your logbook. Once depositions are completed, you can um, turn off your timer, off on your power. We can turn power supply off. We can uh, press the on button for our ion gauge. We can, on your argon mass fl flow controller, switch off, toggle up to test on your Metallica target status, and close gate valve, and turn your argon flow to close. That's a quarter turn clockwise. Once We've shut everything down. We're going to go ahead and uh, vent the system by opening your N2 valve. This typically takes one minute to vent. We're going to be waiting for the hoist light. At this time, I can take out the tags telling me which target was on which source gun. I can put my clock away in the drawer. I will need a baggie for uh, when I clean off the paste from my targets. Once I see the ready hoist light, I wait one additional minute until the decompression it will break wafers if you don't wait that additional minute. One more minute. Thirty seconds. I'm looking for decompression. Lift it. You can now close the N2 valve. It's done its job. I am now going to remove my wafers at this point off the platen. Once I have my wafers off, I'll start to take all parts out of the chamber. Picking up your platen, setting it on the clean wipes, remove chimneys, 
Remember, if you only need one metal, you just leave one full uh, set up inside the chamber. You don't have to remove it. Get your screwdriver from your drawer. Your You're going to turn till they bobble on top, then you know they're pretty short screws. Pick up your cathodes. Now you can pick up your target. We're going to clean off the paste. We're going to fold the cleanest wipe we have. Front and back with IPA. Lift. Remove the paste. You have different panels to work with. Open. another panel till you get it clean once we have it nice and clean again we'll drop it in our box with our metals the titanium make sure it goes into the right baggie this wipe will go into your Plastic, do not throw IPA in the trash. We have more wipes. We'll take the plat um, silver off the platen. Open the panel. Clean the rest. If you need more wipes, you can drop it in, clean it off. Again, the backs of the silvers are, put them in the right baggie. Remember, you have to clean your magnetic table. We have silver paste. IPA on your wipe. Gonna w clean up the table. <laughs> One more time. Make sure I have everything off my magnetic table. That would cause a problem for the next user. Okay, now we can put our um, parts back in. When we put the um, anode first, when we close up, the anode goes first. And the reason for this is because um, we're not going to be screwing down the a target. It's just blank. But um, it keeps the LEDs from flickering. Second one. Down, cathode on top, just lies there. No one's going to use it. A 
we go. Then you want your chimney. You don't care if your chimney is aligned because no one's going to use the system. Lay the platinum, platen in. Then we can lower the bell jar. Okay, to use the roughing pump, you want to still make sure gate valve, roughing valve are both closed. And two, we're going to lower the or raise the roughing pump light comes on open your roughing valve loud at first once it reaches 150 millitor we can close it make sure you Switch the toggle, the roughing pump toggle, back down. Make sure your logbook is filled out. Put your metal box in your roll around cart. You're going to If you had a problem, don't forget to note it in the logbook. We will set the roll around cart back in its place. Uh, clean up our mess. Don't forget your screwdriver, your tweezers, your papers in the trash. This baggie will go in the litho room and its containers. It starts to reach uh, 150. It's only a matter of a minute left and then we can close our roughing valve We can switch the toggle down. The red light will take about a minute before it goes off. You don't have to wait for it. You can just turn tag over, make sure all our valves are on the closed position, disable on coral, and we're done.